Hi there, it's Tim, G5TM, and uh, today I thought we'd take a look at the dipole antenna and how you, or anyone in fact, uh, can fit this into a small space. Nice to see you again, and uh, welcome back if you're a regular, then uh, lovely to see you again. And if you've stumbled across me for the first time, well, a big welcome to you too. And uh, if you like what you see, think about clicking that subscribe button, notification bell, maybe even give me a little thumbs up if you like what you see today. So then, the dipole. We've all heard of that, haven't we? The dipole, two legs, centre fed, coax going down, nice and easy. Often it's the, uh, the first antenna we make when we get into the hobby. My first antenna was a 20 meter dipole inverted V. And um, there's a reason why they're so popular because, you know, for, if you're making wire antennas, you do quite well, I think, to beat a dipole, especially if you get it on, up at the right sort of height. So we're gonna to look today at, um, well, some of the very basics about a dipole, but what we're looking at more than anything is how you, or anyone in fact, of course, can uh, shape a dipole and fit it in to most um, sort of garden spaces, outdoor spaces. And it's a lot more versatile than maybe even you might think in terms of how you can squeeze a dipole, even to even the smallest looking space. So as you may or may not know, uh, a dipole is basically an antenna, therefore, that's fed with two legs uh, in the middle, coax. So effectively, you get one leg coming like that, one leg like that. Identical lens, of course, centre fed dipole. You can have other variants as well, but we won't cover that in this video. And then you've got the, the coax coming down. And of course, one leg will be fed with the centre conductor, and the other leg will be fed by the you have to, you have to braid, okay? And effectively, that's how the dipole works. So, of course, what we've got here as our first drawing is a traditional flat top dipole. So, basically, it's tied off to maybe two support poles, or maybe two trees, or whatever you've got. Maybe there's a pulley on both ends there, okay? And effectively, you keep it nice and flat. So, the radiation pattern is broadside to the antenna. So, effectively, your RF is coming sort of this way, and there'll be, there'll be nulls coming off the ends. That's basically the theory behind it. And this design should get you around 72 ohms. So an SWR of around 1.3 to 1 is expected, but you know, your mileage may vary. But depending on the band, I mean 17 meters for example is a pretty narrow band, so you should be able to cover 17 meters quite comfortably with a very low SWR. 10 meters is a different ball game. 10 meters is quite a lot large band from 28 up to 29 and beyond, so um, you've got to be maybe a little bit more selective with your 10 meter dipole, for example. But all in all, dipole should give you pretty good coverage for the band of selection. Now, um, let's say, for example, this was a, um, I don't know, a 40, 40 meter di uh, dipole. So each leg would be around about 33 feet, that's about 10 meters long. So you'd be quite um, natural to suppose, therefore, that you need 10, 20, you need 20 meters of space 65, 66 foot of space to put your 40 meter dipole in. Now say for example you haven't got that space, maybe you've only got half of that space, and maybe you're coming to the conclusion, well I can't put a 40 meter dipole into my garden, into my yard. Well, there might be some solutions. Let's see what you could possibly do about that. Okay, now um, we've got a slight variation of what we've looked at so far. So if we get about the flat top dipole, remember we've got a lack of space for our 40 meter dipole. So one way we can do this is like this. Let me just bring this a bit closer to the camera for you and hopefully you can see. So, uh, I'm trying to avoid the glare a bit for you. Ah, that's not too bad. So what we have here basically then is an antenna that's been supported in the middle. Uh, whoops. Uh, <laughs> in the middle, maybe by a fiberglass pole or something like that. Or maybe an aluminium pole, whatever you've got. And then, as you can see, we've got the two um, dipole legs coming off the middle as normal, but we've got them dangling down as well, yeah? So this is called the inverted U, and basically you can get away with this as long as you've got around at least half the, the, the dipole coming at a relatively flat top. It can, it can go down a little bit like that as well, like an inverted V, and we'll look at an example in a minute. But try and get around half of each leg going at around sort of a flat top or a fairly shallow angle if you can, 
because don't forget with a dipole the, the maximum amount of current that's where your, where your signal is going to come out from is basically in that first half of each leg it's that middle part of the antenna all right so you want to try and keep that as high as you can to maximize your sort of uh, to maximize your signal if you can really especially if you've got this up somewhere near half a wavelength but that's a different story anyway 50% of it, the rest can dangle down, as long as you're out of reach of children, pets, etc. And that you tie it off, you've insulated from the rope, you tie it down or something, then that's something you can do, so you can get away with that. So for example, with a 40 meter dipole, you can have about maybe, I don't know, 18, 20 foot of it going fairly flat, and the rest of it dangling down. As long as you're about eight, to, maybe well, not eight, maybe 10 feet off the ground, so as long as you've got something like about 25, 30 foot of height, from when it starts to go down, you should have plenty of room then to dangle about the other 40% of the antenna down and then have it out of reach of, uh, of uh, children and things like that. Because don't forget with a, with a dipole, it's high current in the middle, that's where your RF gets sent, it's high voltage at the end. Especially if you're using uninsulated wire, you don't want someone getting into contact with this uh, when you're putting anything on, let alone you know, 100 watts or even more than that especially. So you've got to be very careful. Even with 10 watts, you can get a nasty RF burn. So you've got to be very, very careful about that. So that's the inverted U. So immediately then, we don't need this 66 foot of space, this 20 meters of space. We can get away now with about 50 or 60% of that. So that's one version. There's a couple of others you might want to consider as well. Okay, now we've got the inverted V. You can see again we've got the centre support pole and this time we've got the antenna coming down at a fairly shallow angle. Now, the angle is important. You want to try and keep the angle between the two legs at least 90 degrees if you can. All right. Um, that way you're going to try and minimise signal, uh, any signal cancellation, but 90 degrees or more is great. Now, you think, well, why do an inverted V? Well, it will save you space. So, um, Let's look at this as an example. So we've got an antenna, look, look at the blue figures. The antenna from ground to the top is 10 meters. So it's fed at 10 meters off the ground. You can see though, that we've only got seven meters from the pole to where it needs to be tied off. So you think we've only got seven meters per side. We're struggling here to put in two 10 meter legs for a 40 meter dipole. So let's say for example then, uh, you're gonna tie this off you're going to tie it off at around six meters off the ground. You've got another pole coming here, for example, it's going to be six meters up, and this wire is going to be tied off six meters off the ground. So you've got four meters of height between where it gets, where it starts off in the center to where it gets fed, tied off at the end, or where it's going to reach the pole at the end. That's four meters. 10 minus six is four meters of height. And you know, of course, you've got seven meters between the pole and where it gets tied off to, or where it meets the pole, yeah? When the centre pole and the end pole, the difference there is 7 metres, going that way. So, basically then, to work out how much uh, wire space you have, is you multiply the 4 metres by itself at 16, so you take the square of the 4, the square of 7, 7 sevens of 49, add them up, and take the square root. So again, your calculator will do this for you. And what you're doing here effectively, of course, is doing something called Pythagoras' theorem, which I covered before in a, in, a, in a video, and I'll leave it up there somewhere for you to have a look at that. But effectively, you've now got eight meters of wire rather than seven. And it says at least 90 degrees. So in here, for example, um, we have enough wire there for eight meters. And you can always drop it down a couple of meters again. So you're six meters up, if you just drop down a couple of, a couple of meters from there, to give yourself 10 meters of wire, you're still four meters off the ground just about high enough. So you're about 12, 13 feet, that's four meters off the ground, and that's plenty um, high enough to avoid coming into contact with anyone, again, with those high voltage ends of the dipole. So just to say then, again, that's another way in which you can fit in wire to a smaller space. And um, with uh, an inverted V dipole, it'll also give you a uh, even better match uh, to, to, uh, to 50 ohms. It should give you around 50 ohms, not far off. You see the same on quarter wave verticals, the raised verticals on quarter waves. If you have the antenna, sorry, the, the radials on the antenna at around, uh, around sort of 45 degrees, yeah, then effectively what you then have is a situation where you have uh, a, a, a measurement of around 50 ohms. So you get a pretty good match, and inverted Vs tend to give you a pretty good match as well. Um, they do give you a, a, a slightly higher uh, radiation angle, and uh, they are a little bit more omnidirectional 
than a flat top dipole. So not, it's not seen quite as um, as quite as, as good a performer maybe as a flat top dipole, but certainly they'll do you well. They'll work you plenty of DX, you know, if you've got a good enough sort of position for it and a decent height. So the antenna itself, therefore, an inverted V, and uh, that again will give you more wire into your space as well. And don't be afraid once again to drop the wires down vertically. As long as you're high enough to be out of reach at the ends of them, uh, you'll be absolutely fine. Okay, and the final dipole arrangement we're going to look at this evening, just very quickly, it is the evening here, I'll try to avoid the glare again for you, I hope, I hope that's okay, is the sloper dipole. Well, you've probably heard of slopers for N-fed wires, but you can do the same with a dipole. And I haven't mentioned one thing which I should have, which I'll mention now about this antenna, that applies to all dipoles, in fact. You can see here that the, the top of the, um, of the wire is at the top here by the tree somewhere, and then you've got the, the bottom there. And again, the important thing is, as I mentioned before, is to try and tie the, the end of the antenna out of reach of children and pets and things like that. So have it about, again, in excess of 10 feet, three meters, four meters off the ground would be great. So that's fine. Now you notice the coax is coming down perpendicular. It's coming down uh, straight down 90 degrees from the plane of the, of the actual dipole itself. And that's something you need to try to achieve as best you can in all centre-fed antennas to try and minimise any uh, any radiation that you might cause off the coax. You don't want the coax to radiate, okay? You also should consider putting a choke ballon in the centre of your dipoles too. Um, some people swear by them, some people say they're not needed. I'll let you decide that. Uh, some people actually don't put a choke ballon here to minimise the amount of weight on the feed line, but then maybe put a ballon, uh, not a ballon, a, um, uh, a choke somewhere between or before the coax enters the shack to try and therefore minimize the amount of RF on the feed line that way. Although it will therefore, there is RF in the feed line before it gets to your choke down here, it will alter the radiation pattern of the antenna a little bit, but you probably won't notice the difference. And with a, with a sloper as well, the direction where it slopes down is a little bit of gain that way, okay? So from top to bottom, where it slopes down to the bottom is a little bit more gain in that direction. But again, you still make contacts that way as well, of course. So again, this is another thing you can do. And again, um, I've got a situation here where I've got about uh, 30 feet going that way, but I know if I slope it down, I'll get about more like 40 or 45 feet of wire in. So again, this is another thing you can do, another example. And again, if you tie it off here, say 12 feet off the ground, four meters off the ground, and you can, you can run it, say, at an angle of no less than 90 degrees somewhere else, again, at a height which is out of the way, then you can always run it over there or back here, somewhere up there, as long as that angle that you change direction is not less than 90 degrees, because that, again, would, would maybe alter your SWR a little bit, and also would, would, not, would denigrate the, um, the performance of the antenna a wee bit as well. But you just try and do what you can do. So that's the sloper, and that's another example that you should try. So then, the good old dipole, it has many things going for it, doesn't it? It has versatility, um, people put them in attics. I mean, people literally put them in attics, then zigzag them around the rafters. Um, I mean, they are very versatile, quite forgiving antennas. And you don't have to think just of a flat top dipole. That's the classic design, but there's many other ways you can do it. I mean, I'll put a link here for a video I've done somewhere up here um, where I managed to do a doublet, which all that is is a dipole which is centre fed with ladder line rather than coax. Um, and what I did with that was literally last year I snaked one of the one leg, one leg of it, literally sort of a bit like that and around like that and back like that. And it was mad, but it worked and did really well on 80 meters which is what I wanted it for really, because I've got very little space in my garden. And uh, you can get away with lots of things with dipoles. Just make sure as much as you can that the feed line, uh, maybe it's coax or ladder line, comes down 90 degrees as far as you can possibly make it. Um, keep the ends of the dipole out of the reach of children, pets, maybe 10, 12 feet, three to four meters as a minimum would be great if you can do that. Um, and yeah, there's more than one way to skin a cat, so don't be afraid to experiment. Uh, should you use a choke ballon in the middle? Up to you, uh, up to you. If you've got a telescopic fiberglass pole as support and getting maybe a, um, a chunky ballon up there is gonna be pretty much impossible because it'll just snap the pole. Um, people have got away without using uh, chokes in the middle. You know, do what you wanna do, go for it, see what you think. 
Uh, some people get away with using the, uh, the, the choke on the feed line before it enters the shack. It will change maybe a little bit the, um, uh, the pattern of the antenna. You'll probably find the coax will radiate a little bit, but as long as it doesn't come back into your radio and into your shack, then to be honest with you, it'll still work. So worth experimenting. They're great antennas, dipoles, and uh, they're such a simple antenna to make. Speaker wire, two identical lens, you just cut it, there we are, done. Peel them off, two wires, get on and make it. Um, and uh, they are very, very versatile antennas. Thanks for watching, hope that's helped you a little bit anyway, especially if you're come kind of new into HF and maybe you're thinking about your first antenna. Uh, the humble, or maybe not so humble, monoband dipole is one to think of. Just think about how much space you've got, have a go at working it out and don't be afraid to experiment. Hope that's helped anyway and thanks for watching. This is Tim G5TM wishing you 73 and if you fancy clicking subscribe that'd be wonderful. But above all, take care and stay safe. All the best now and thanks for watching. Bye bye.